25 to 8. I'm glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. Let's now transition and uh, look at our business update, harnessing current and uh, economic opportunities for growth in the world. I'll be introducing my guest very shortly after the preamble. The world economy is facing severe headwinds amid weak growth prospects, elevated inflation and heightened uncertainties, a confluence of factors including legacy effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the protracted war in Ukraine, the worsening impacts of climate change and the rapidly shifting macroeconomic conditions are weighing in on global outlooks. A stubbornly high inflation on, uh, in both developed and developing countries has prompted the most aggressive interest rate hike cycles in decades, causing financial conditions to tighten and exacerbate date vulnerabilities. While the prospects remain subdued, the global growth slowdown in 2023 was less likely anticipated and we have uh, Uganda in particular and some of the economies across the region and Africa in general have met their expectations. For perspective on this, I'm joined by Dennis Dokoria, the Senior Public Relations Officer at the Uganda Development Corporation. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. How are you? The um, preamble there was uh, telling mm -hmm. severe uh, headwinds in uh, the global economy some growth prospects in some aspects. Inflation is something that we are dealing with as a nation. It's pretty much what uh, Jerome Powell, the chairperson of the uh, Federal Reserve Bank, continues to grapple with. And uh, the after effects can be seen or rather trickle down to economies like ours. But before we look into that, the Uganda Development Corporation stands as a beacon of the transformation process that uh, the country has sought to undertake. Where are we right now in terms of that strategy? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here once again. I'm Most Dennis Dokoria uh, from the Uganda Development Corporation. Oh. You know, when we speak about Uganda Development Corporation, the first thing we cannot uh, fail to talk about the history oh. of UDC. That's right. Now, when we speak about the history, UDC was first formed in 1952 oh. as, as a a transformative institution to facilitate uh, the development of industry in the country. Mm. And this organization continued to grow that by, by the 1970s, UDC was the largest industrial hub, having what we call subsidiaries and associate companies mm. as part of it. Mm. Uh, if you know the likes of uh, the mining sector, you talk about the Tororo cement, you mm. talk about the uh, Hima, you know, copper mines, all those were under UDC. If you go to the real estate, under UDC. The hotel sector uh, were all under UDC, mm -hmm. you know, the Uganda the hotels. Uganda hotels, yeah. Yes, and uh, the banking sector, were, most of them were under UDC. Mm -hmm. To the effect that UDC then even owned up to, I mean, contributed up to almost 30% mm -hmm. to the GDP of this country. And it was the second largest employer to government. Mm -hmm. That means it employed majority of the people in this country. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, uh, over the time we had the upheavals in the 70s, and also in the 80s and early 90s, we had what we call a policy change mm. in the country. Mm. And the policy change was towards liberalization and privatization. So in effect, most of the institutions of UDC were privatized. Mm. And thereby, in 1998, UDC wound up because it didn't have much to, to, con to, um, to handle mm. anymore. That's right. Now, throughout, definitely the government took a stand to, for privatization, mm. which is a good thing, because a privatized, private-led economy or industrialization. Mm. But government realized that the private sector alone may not be able to drive the industrialization efforts in the country. Mm. So that was when the discussion started again. How do we come get involved again? In this in this thing and that's when <coughs> UDC was reformed why 
apparently there are certain sectors that are transformative oh. or are able to lead for the transformation of this country but the private sector may be shy to get in one oh. probably because of the risk involved uh -huh. Uh, probably because of um, you know private Big sector involvement, capital. yeah, capital, mm -hmm. and the capital be, uh, involved, and also in terms of um, the attractiveness, in terms of profitability. Mm -hmm. You know, some are not that may not look that profitable. That's right. But the country has not only is the country looking to start business and industrialization, but also looking to create jobs mm -hmm. for for the people, and that's how UDC came up. So UDC was formed again in 2016 mm. so we are not very old we are still a little young mm. but uh, the mandate that was given to us is to promote and facilitate industrial and economic growth mm. in this country and that is what we are doing so we are transforming and we are developing in the industry mm. in this country we do this by um, by establishing what we call subsidiary and associate companies mm. when we talk about subsidiary subsidiary company is a company that is developed and the government has more than 50 percent share holding in it mm. whereas an associate company is a company where the government has less than 50 percent so udc in essence is the investment arm of mm. government and currently we have been able to support uh, 16 entities we have intervened in 16 entities and that is key mm. right now in our <coughs> intervention areas. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, given the current state of uh, the economy and uh, looking at how every other <coughs> country across the globe is faring, there are people who are concerned about what should be the strategic thrust mm -hmm. for economic development. Yes. Industrialization is one pillar, but the how of it pretty much matters yeah. especially when it comes to what particular industries are of uh, you're paying attention to are we going into the value addition aspects of industrialization are we zeroing in on any particular uh, crops or uh, for example coffee uh, are we zeroing in on uh, a particular activity that helps or rather that has we have advantages in in terms of comparative advantage as UDC you could be on the execution side implementation side or you flip-flop and overlap as and when the need arises okay uh, thank you very much now um currently mm. we are intervening in three sectors okay um, and I, I think now we could even say the fourth sector mm. uh, key to us is agro manufacturing agro manufacturing yep uh, then we're also intervening in the mineral beneficiation Mm. We're also intervening in the services and infrastructure. Okay. And now we have also gone into pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, in the pharmaceutical sector. Oh, that's interesting. So um, how do we intervene? Maybe let me start from there. Uh -huh. uh, our interventions are in form of equity participation. And equity participation means we actually um, fund, offer funding in exchange for for equity oh. so shareholding a stake in the company and that is what we have in all these entities that we are intervening in but we intervene in uh, we do equity participation in enterprises that are transformative oh. either economically or socially because we imagine that economically basically we there is the, they look they are going to be profitable oh. that means the economy is going to be earning some money but socially also they're able to transform people's lives that's right because transformation should not only be economic but oh. also social that's oh. why when we talk about our vision we're looking at social economic transformation oh. we're looking at transforming uh, our people oh. so uh, we also intervene in terms of lease lease uh, lease financing or finance lease oh. where we're able to offer uh, lease to equipment we lease equipment to some of these enterprises those are some of the interventions we also do business development services uh, we also offer shareholder loans and, and and the sort but looking at the areas of our intervention 
One of the key areas we have intervened in is the agro manufacturing mm. in, uh, in terms of agro processing. Yeah. If you look at the economy, Uganda is an agrarian based economy. And because an agrarian based economy, there is a lot of emphasis, especially uh, the, the, His Excellency the President emphasizes mm. value addition as key to, to the country. Mm. And so we have taken that up uh, very seriously. And almost 60% of our enterprises, okay. our interventions currently, are in the agro-manufacturing sector. Mm. So we have intervened, for example, in the tea sector, where we actually have four uh, companies, four enter enterprises mm. we have supported in the tea sector. Um, in the regions, in the, that's mostly in the western region, the mm. uh, southwestern region, in uh, Chenjojo, uh, Kabarole, Kanungu, uh, Kabale and uh, Chisoro. Mm. We have also intervened in uh, the cotton sector where we are supporting an enterprise in Luka. Mm. We have also intervened uh, in the fruits and vegetable sector where we have uh, intervention in Soroti and Yumbe. Mm. Um, we have intervened in the cassava, maize and sorghum sector uh, crops where we have an intervention in, um, in Noya. Mm. We have intervened in the sugar sector, where we have an intervention in, uh, in, in uh, Atiak. Mm. And uh, we have intervened in the coffee sector, where we have an intervention in Sironko, in Budadiri. So in agriculture, we have already intervened in those sectors, mm. and we already have enterprises that are already operational in those sectors. Mm. Uh, then in the manufacturing, in the mineral beneficiation mm. sector, those, those are still work in progress. Mm. But currently we're already working towards um, sheet glass in Masaka. Mm. We're working towards um, lime and um, cement and marble mm. in Moroto. We're already working towards iron ore as well as an area also of intervention. Mm. And uh, most of these interventions need huge capital input that's right. and uh, that's why the government is coming in so when we go to the services sector mm. which is our third intervention area we have intervened in the hospitality sector so we are supporting <coughs> for example uh, Nile Hotel Inter I mean Nile Hotel International Limited which which manages the concession mm. of uh, this facility where we are that's right. is a hundred percent owned by UDC mm. Uh, we also have, um, we have also intervened in, uh, we have uh, a stake in Commonwealth Convention Center, uh, um, the, I mean the Speak Resort Convention Speak Center that is being uh, constructed right now, mm. and also in the Munyonyo Commonwealth. Now through Nile Hotel, we have also um, intervened mm. in Igongo, Igongo uh, Cultural so same, Hotel. Same, yeah. Yeah, so we have that. So in the construction, we have intervened in uh, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Construction uh, oh, Company okay. that is constructing roads. So we have also gone into the construction sector. And when we come, then we, in Kalangala, we have what we call the KIS, Kalangala Infrastructure Services. Oh. Now, Kalangala Infrastructure Services is offering transport, uh, ferry transport oh. on the island, oh. on the Kalangala island. We're also uh, offering water, piped water, and we're also generating electricity mm. on that island. So we are, we sometimes we say we're the Umeme of the island, we are the national water of the island, <laughs> and we are the UNRA okay. <laughs> the road the sector okay. of the island. Yes. Yeah, that's quite interesting, and uh, it shows that your footprint is quite large and deep yes. at the same time. Yes. Now, with that kind of uh, leverage, uh, many people would uh, be pained and want to understand at what point do you leverage on the fact that you are a player but likely regulator too i don't know whether it uh, up it at any one point in time you could be seen to work towards ensuring that perhaps the standards are good mm. are observed there are also challenges for example in the agro uh, and the agro sector aspects of farm gate prices 
where there are so many farmers uh, in the villages and across far-flung areas who are unable to get the best possible return from their produce as a result of low uh, farm gate prices. And then the middlemen who then get the products to the market do get all the profit. As one, uh, as UDC mm -hmm. being a player and also government uh, owned, there is a possibility that you could have the leverage to ensure that some of these uh, challenges are addressed. How are you doing that? Well, um, as UDC, mm. one, we are not a regulator, we are a facilitator. Facilitator. Yes, so we mm. facilitate industrial development mm. and uh, we work with the private sector. We actually support the private sector. You know, we have not come into this to compete with the private sector. We are actually here to facilitate uh, industrial development. Looks and like that's why. Line. <laughs> well, that's why I told you that yeah. most of our investments, mm. actually, we do not own more than 50%, more than 50 in those that entities. That is to allow for greater management exactly. and control on the other end exactly. than on your side. <clears throat> so majority, you know, other than the previous, previously, the previous UDC mm. that had many uh, subsidiary companies where we owned mm. more than 100%. Mm. Of the 16 that we're talking about, I think we only have two that are subsidiary. That is Nile Hotel and uh, Soroti Fruit Factory. But the rest of the, the uh, industries, enterprises we are supporting are subsidiary. I mean, are associate, associate companies. Company. So they are owned, they are managed, they are run. The private sector has a bigger stake than we do in it. Okay. So that is how we facilitate. Yeah. But when you talk about the market and you're talking about the farm grade prices and all that, yeah. we're actually coming to intervene in that area. Yeah. We are working with uh, NSSF, yeah. the National Social Security Fund, to start what we call the National Marketing Company. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we, we are hoping it will, it will be starting soon. And, yeah. and the objective of this National Marketing Company is to ensure that we're able to find market for the produce that this country has. Because we have very good produce, we have very good, and many times you find that um, the biggest challenge we have is the market. Uh. And we're hoping that when the marketing, national marketing company starts, it will be able to normalize and guarantee certain um, good prices at least uh. for the farmers. Okay. Other than, because majority of the farmers tend to even sell their gardens uh. even before the crop is, uh. is, is harvested. harvested. So that is work in progress. We hope uh, by next year uh. we should have that company uh, running, starting, huh? starting. And what we're looking at is still, even when that company starts, it's going to work with the private sector uh. because the company is looking to leverage the available infrastructure that the private sector has uh. to be able to store these uh, produce and be able to find market and sell this produce okay. to the market. So it's going to be uh. working together with, uh, with the private sector. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mr. Dokoria, we shall be transitioning into a discussion uh, shortly where we shall be analyzing Somalia's entry into the East African Community Block. Yeah. This has been heralded as one of the good moves, especially when it comes to entrenching economic integration and, yeah. of course, offering <coughs> opportunities for a greater market and mm -hmm. also access to the sea. And uh, one would be pained to understand where is Uganda's uh, footprint across the region that is more targeted than just seeing the public sector go out. We see companies that are originating in Kenya mm -hmm. Uh, work and establish uh, branches across the region. They could be banks, they could be uh, other service providers. Where is Uganda's strategy in ensuring that the, the Democratic Republic of Congo is reached in terms of uh, how wide the market is now that Somalia is coming on board? Wouldn't the Uganda Development Corporation be the best vehicle to move investment and then be able to put Uganda's goods uh, services out there so that we can also benefit just like Kenya does. True. Well, you see, um, Somalia coming to the ESC definitely opens up more markets mm. and it has immense opportunity. Uh, you see, when people work together, it's easy for you to open up That's right. for, for the market and especially for the products that are available. Mm. So our role here is how can we enhance industrialization within our country. Mm. 
Uh -huh. How can we get more uh, uh, industry to grow further within the country? Uh -huh. Especially, we have gone through difficult economic uh, challenges. But the question is, how can we support uh -huh. enterprises to remain a going concern? Yeah. So that if they're going concern, they are able to find market for their products. Now, you look at the tea sector, for example. Uh -huh. By the time we intervened in some of these entities, we found them struggling. Uh. Now, if a tea organization closes, one, you're sure that direct jobs are going to be lost in terms of hundreds. No doubt. You're sure that the farmers, the tea farmers who are producing um, the tea, uh. are going to have challenges of where to take their product to the market. Three, almost 98% or 95% of the tea that we produce in this country is exported. Is exported yeah. So the fact that it is exported, that mm. means there is, there is going to be um, foreign exchange coming into the country. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is that the opportunity in Somalia mm. is a big opportunity for industry in Uganda. The opportunity in the region is a big opportunity for industry in Uganda. Mm. The opportunity in Africa is a big opportunity for industry in Uganda. Yeah. So our work, let's build the industrial base within the country so that we're able to have products that can compete um, regionally mm. and we're able to export our product and there will be a lot of transformation within the country in terms of lives. Okay, Mr. Dennis Dokoria, Senior Public Relations Officer at Uganda Development Corporation, many thanks for the submission and uh, emboldening our understanding of matters economics and what you're up to Thank as you. far as Uganda Development Corporation is concerned. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure too. Thank you. Let's take a break. When we return, we shall be going live to Somalia, where we shall be joined via Zoom by uh, Mr. Uh, Simon Molongo, an international relations specialist, and another gentleman, Kasim Kamgisha, the deputy RCC in Akawa, to discuss the entry of uh, Somalia into the East African community. That trajectory is one that heralds expansion and growth. But will it actually be exactly what everyone thinks it should be? Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>